Welcome to my lecture online. In this video, we're going to explore the concept of the radius of gyration. And in specific, we're going to do it relative to an area, because it could also be done relative to a mass. But here we're going to do it relative to an area. And first, we're going to approach this conceptually. In the next video, we're actually going to calculate it out. So let's say that we have a certain area that has an area equal to A, and it's some distance away from the x-axis. And if we're going to try to find the moment of inertia of this area relative to the x-axis, we take a small little area element, we then multiply that times the distance to that element squared, so this distance is y, so we have y squared dA, and then we integrate that over the entire area. That gives us the moment of inertia, or the second moment of area, of this particular area relative to the x-axis. Now, what if we could take all of that area and draw it as a thin little strip? Of course, we have to make the strip very long since it's very thin, so that the strip contains the exact same amount of area. So the area of the strip is equal, equal to the area of this drawn area right there. Then where would I have to place the strip in such a way that if I then calculate the moment of inertia of the strip, I would get the exact same value? Of course, we know that if the strip is really thin, I don't have to integrate over the thickness, I can simply take the area of the strip and multiply it times the distance to the x-axis squared, and that distance here, we'll call it r sub g, is defined as the radius of gyration. So therefore, we can define the radius of gyration as the distance we would have to place an equivalent area in the shape of a very, very little thin little strip away from the axis of rotation, the axis to which we're trying to find the moment of inertia. So again, we take the area of the, the drawn area right here, we make it into a thin little strip so that the area of the strip is equal to the area of the drawn figure right here, and then the moment of inertia will be equal to the radius squared, the radius of gyration squared, times the area. In other words, this can now be set equal to, oh, and we don't have to integrate it, because we have a thin little strip, so this simply becomes the radius of gyration squared times the area of the strip, which is equal to the area of the drawn figure. And that's what we mean by the definition of the radius of gyration. If we now solve for that in terms of the area of the figure and the moment of inertia of the figure relative to the x-axis, we can then say that the radius of gyration squared is equal to the moment of inertia relative to the x-axis divided by the area of the figure. In other words, the radius of gyration is going to be equal to the square root of the moment of inertia divided by the area. And that is conceptually the concept of the radius of gyration. Notice we can do it as well for the y-axis. Again, if we take a certain area here, and we calculate the moment of inertia of that area relative to the y-axis, we know that it's equal to the integral of the distance to any area element squared times the area element dA integrated over the entire area of that figure. But instead, what we do is we take the area and we make it into a very thin little strip in such a way that the area of the strip is equal to the area of the figure. Now we have to place it somewhere in such a way that when we calculate the moment of inertia of the strip relative to the y-axis, we get the exact same value. That distance is defined as the radius of gyration. In other words, this can also then be written as the radius of gyration squared times the area because that is equal to the moment of inertia of an area where we don't have to integrate over because it's so thin at a distance r away from the axis of rotation. So in just the same way, we can say that radius of gyration squared is equal to the ratio of the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis divided by the area, or the radius of gyration is equal to the square root of the moment of inertia relative to the y-axis divided by a. So that's the definition of the radius of gyration. Where would we have to put an equivalent area in the form of a thin strip so we get the very same moment of inertia? And that's what it is.